Welcome, welcome, mobile traders. This is Mobile Stocks, the platform that teaches and promotes people with full-time lives how to part-time trade and invest in the stock market. I'm your instructor, Bradley LC. And for today's video, I want to talk about reading charts. It's very important to understand that as a trader, you need a system. It can be a system that you made yourself through years of experience in trading. It could be a system that you found from somebody else on YouTube, Instagram, whatever. It could be my system. That's not the point. The point is that you stick to a system, you identify with that system, and then you use that system. You use it, and if it helps you, if it benefits you, keep using that system and disregard what anybody else say. This is my system. This system may be of use to you. Uh, it's of use to me. That's why I'm teaching this form of system, but I don't knock any other person's or person's uh, system and what they do. So without further ado, let's get into my system. These are nine keys that I look at when I'm reading stock charts. One, pick a chart with a clear trend up or down. Okay, this could be a stock chart. This could be an ETF chart. You look at something with a clear trend up or down. Now, it's very important to understand that if a chart is bullish or bearish, you can catch a, a swing either way in that chart. You can catch a bearish swing in a bullish chart and vice versa. It's very important to understand that as swing traders, I teach my students to understand and try your best to catch price correction. So... Very important to have a clear trend of a chart going up or down, easy to identify, easier to catch a swing. I'm going to show you an example of that later. Two, identify the line leader slash line leaders of that sector. What I mean by that is when you think of companies like Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, Bank of America, these are line leaders of their sector, well-traded stocks that people know across the globe about. People know about Tesla, people know about Apple, people know about Nike, people know about Johnson & Johnson. These are brands as well-established, so it's well-traded too. You can look at that as well-traded, well-established, well-traded. You look at these line leaders because these line leaders are telling of what may be happening in that sector, right? So if you look at Apple, for an example, Apple falls into the tech sector, right? So if Apple's doing well, a lot of times you find that stocks that's under the tech sector may be doing well, too. If Johnson & Johnson is doing well, that falls into the medical sector. You may find that Things in the medical sector are also doing well because Johnson & Johnson is doing well. Now, establishing what you think a line leader is, pretty much you can actually Google um, most traded medical stocks, most traded tech stocks, most traded EV stocks. And a list of pop up, you know, it vary from different web, you know, web searches or whatever, but... A lot of the same names will pop up, and you can establish that as your line leader slash line leaders. So that's how you do that. Step three, identify if the security you may want to trade is moving as a unit or solo from its sector. What I mean by that is a lot of times you find that every day news is dropping, some type of catalyst is dropping for stock. It can be, you know, Apple uh, saying that they're dropping a new phone, they're merging with somebody, whatever it is. You have to look at that stock that you want to trade, that ETF that you want to trade, and say to yourself, is this moving the same as my line leaders? So let's use, uh, since I like using Apple, let's stick with Apple. Apple is my line leader for tech and my tech space, right? So if I'm looking at a stock that's in my tech space, that's in tech, let's say I'm looking at a semiconductor that's in tech too. 
a semiconductor like AMD or a semiconductor like MU, right? If I'm looking at a semiconductor and I say, okay, I see his red, I see his green. I want to look at the top semiconductor stock that I can find. I want to compare it to that. So say if I want to trade MU, right? I want to look at MU and one of the top uh, semiconductor stocks that I know of is AMD and NVIDIA. NVIDIA is NVAD or something like that. I want to look at NVIDIA and I want to look at AMD and I want to compare it to MU. Now, if all of them green, you know, that lets me know that it may be moving as a unit. And the whole semiconductor, uh, the whole semiconductor industry may be green today. Now, if I look at AMD and I look at uh, NVIDIA, and I see that as red, but I see MU is green. MU may be moving off of some form of news that, you know, that came out already or is about to come out that I don't know about. Then I want to look at MU and I want to compare it to Apple because Apple semiconductor still falls on the tech. I want to see if if it's coming up to, you know, if it can match with my Apple. Basically, what I'm saying is I want to look at the stock with the ETF that I'm into, and I want to make a couple of comparisons before I hop into it because I want to get a very clear picture. And I'm going to show examples of this later. But I want to look at MU for this example. I want to compare it to something like AMD. I want to compare it to something like NVIDIA. I want to compare it to something like Apple. And then I want to take it a step further. I want to compare it to SPY, SPY, and see if, you know, SPY green or red. And I want to see, you know, because SPY represents the top 500 companies in the U.S. I want to look at that. And I want, you want to ga- gather as much info as you can gather before you get into any trade. Because when you get into any trade, long term or short term is a very intimate thing. You want to be sure, as sure as you can be. Because you don't want to lose money, right? So that's the name of the game. Step four, look at average volume and compare it to current volume. So MU, I want to look at MU and I want to say, okay, my average value from MU, let's just say for this example, is about 4000 I mean, I'm sorry, $4 million. That's my average value. If I'm looking at the current volume and it's trading at six, seven million or eight million, nine, ten, a lot of so it's trading more than four million. I'm thinking, okay, it's something definitely going on with this stock. It's a lot of trading activity in this. I wanna know why. If it's trading less than that, okay, it's less trading activity. It's probably nothing's going on right now. So it's always important to look at your volume. Volume is very telling. Five, identify the last power move on the stock chart. What I mean by that is you want to look at the last candlestick. It can be red. It can be green. It can have a large candle wick up or down. Doesn't matter. You want to identify the last power move the chart has. So the last time the value doubled. So I'm talking about volume for NU. The average volume is $4 million for this example. You want to look at stuff that's $8 million and above. $8 million, $16 million. You want to look at when volume is really high. That's the power move. You want to find out why volume was high that day, and you want to compare and you know compare and contrast to where volume is now and the the moves that's been making since the power move. Has it been going up? Has it been going down? Has it been going up with high volume, low volume, medium volume? Maybe it's consolidating. So you want to collect all the info that you can, and that's pretty much why you look at volume. Six identify. Strong support, strong supply and demand zones, support and resistance, include MA lines. What I mean by that is every chart has a supply zone, a selling zone, slash support and resistance. You want to identify that. Once you identify that, you can say to yourself, okay, okay, this is in a supply zone. This is in a demand zone. I want to buy puts because of this. I want to buy calls because of that. You do that once you determine what it is exactly that you want to look, uh, that you want to do. The next key is calculate probability for both upside and downside using the ATR. So once you find out if you want to buy a put, if you want to buy a call, you looked at your MA lines, you did all the other keys involved. Now you want to say, okay, I want to buy a call. 
If I want to buy a car, I want to look at the probability of it going up, how much money I can possibly make for it going up, depending on how long I'm planning on keeping the contract. I also want to do the same for the downside. If I'm on a car, I want to look at the probability of it going down. If it goes down and not in my favor, how much money I can lose. Vice versa, if I'm buying a put, I want to see how much money I'm buying. I mean, how much uh, probability I think it can go down. When you're buying a put, that means it's, you think it's going to go down. Versus buying a car, if it goes up, where am I, where I'm going to cut it off at? Um, you want to look at both the upside and downside of things because you can never be 100% certain on your direction. You have a, a great feeling about it, but absolutely 100% certainty of it is something that I don't teach because that's foolish. Anything can happen. The next thing you want to do is plan your entry and exit. Once you find out, you know, all right, this is what I want to do. I want to buy cars. I want to buy puts in this security, uh, stock, or EFT. You want to plan your entry. I want it at this. I'm going to sell at that. I want it at this. I'm going to sell at that. That's, that key is very simple. Step nine is to repeat this process with different securities to find the best setup for you based off your time, money, and comfort level. You, as an individual, do not have the same time, money, or comfortability as any other trader. Everybody is unique. Everybody is special in their own right, in their own way. So remember that you need to focus on what you think is the setup that you have time for, the money that you can put in there for a contract, and your comfortability level because it's all about you as a trader and what you feel comfortable with.